maybe while, while standing, we'll read the scripture. While standing, we'll read the scripture. And um, maybe the media people will ask them during the other service to reduce some of these things. Otherwise, your ears will have a problem. Let's read the scripture from the book of Joshua. We are reading the book of Joshua. Chapter 3, we'll look at verse 1 to verse number 17, and then we'll sit down. Hallelujah. Let's, 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 where, where is Soma too? Lakini usiende mbele sana. Ili usianze kuboeka mapema. Ufungue mdomo, ujisome. Haya, tuende tusome pamoja. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest, the Levite, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priests, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exhort you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hevitites, and the Perizzites, and the... And... The, and... Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now, therefore, take for yourself twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from every tribe. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the sole of the feet of the priest who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the ark dipped into the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of the harvest, that the waters which come down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, that city that is beside Zeratan. So the waters that went down into the sea of Araba, the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over the opposite Jer Jericho. Then the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word and everybody say amen as you sit down. Let's appreciate the worship team. Last time we finished by saying, so she sent them away and they departed 
and she, she tied the scarlet cord in the window. And we looked at what scarlet meant. But now we are in chapter 3 and we, we want to entitle it, Getting Over Your Jordan or Walking Past Your Obstacle or whatever title that you can get, Getting Past Your Jordan. We all have a, a Jordan. We all do. You're not, if you're not in it right now, you are soon going to see it. A Jordan. A Jordan is a situation that stands before you and your destiny. A Jordan is anything that wants to pull you away from what God has said about you in your future and the blessing that he wants to bestow upon you. So we all have a Jordan. When the Lord brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt, he led them toward the promised land. And it took them two years to make that trip. During that time, the Lord gave them his law and taught them how to worship him. But when they arrived at Jordan, all they had to do was enter the land, lay the claim, and wait for the Lord. But what did they do? They got so close, and then it is like too close and yet too far. Getting too close to your blessing, yet having too far from you. So instead of going forward in faith, the people of Israel refused to claim their inheritance in Canaan. Claiming the promise. They wanted to turn around and go back to Egypt. Back to the people who had enslaved them. Back to the people that had punished them. Back to the people that God had delivered them from. They felt like they needed to go back. It was better for they knew a little bit about Egypt than the promised land. And we find it in many times, sometimes God wants us to move. But we find that we are so comfortable of where we are living that we don't want to leave it. Even when where we ought to be would be a better place than where we are. Those years of wrath and death now have expired in chapter number 3. And the children of Israel are now poised. They are just ready to enter into their canon. They are just about to get what God had promised them. They are ready now to claim their inheritance in the land of promise. And unless we get to that point where you feel now you want to claim your inheritance, you will still suffer and somebody else will be enjoying your inheritance. And I have said of late that no, I'm not going to pass my blessing to anyone. If, it, if God says they are mine, even when I think I'm short or black or what, I will still say, Kama mungu wa mesema. He, si pati mtu. You know there are some people who give people, oh, nigari, pati ya daktari. You know, si kupi, daktari, nikipewa gari, naendesha. You, 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 you know what somebody said uh, of a family? They were all butchers. You know butchers, watu wakotia watu nyama kilo. So this young man in that family wanted to do medicine. And he was bright. But the people said, ufanya nini? Hapa, dugu zako, suote ni kukata wanakata nyama na musumenu. Hatawe kata nyama na musumenu. If God was to bless me, I refuse to be boxed by the people around me. So those years of wrath have ended and now it is time to claim my inheritance. I like a, speech, a scripture in the book of Galatians, which um, we in this church have believed in it. Uh, there was one time that we could not even buy two plots here. Two. And it was 70. Biri, it was 70. And when we bought four, we thought the whole world is there. And, uh, but I like the scripture in Galatians. It says, you know, when you are a baby, your inheritance is kept by someone. There is someone holding your inheritance. That's what I'm trying to provoke you to think. Yani, because you are not mature. But now that you have matured, we are telling them to release our inheritance. So when our maturity got up with us, Everybody that was around us, they started surrendering. And you might even ask this house behind us, has it been surrendered many times? Ni pesa na itishaka nyingi kuliko na ukibo. Hiyo wezi bomoa, kwa sababu wa kwa columns. 
What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that now our inheritance, because now anybody holding our inheritance will have to release it. That's the faith that I have. You better walk with that faith. Because some of you ought not to be where you are because you have matured. Hallelujah. When they got to this level, they had matured. They were ready now to enter. You see, normally, Jordan River, those that have gone and I baptized some of you in the Jordan River, it's not that white. It's not that white. Actually, uh, Raphael swam across. It is not far. Raphael Aliogelea. Raphael Yuko. Anyway, the encouragement that the, the Jordan is not that wide. But when there is, there is harvest time, the river overflows. It be, there is water all over. It, it comes to a bigger level. And it can be big. And that is what, ha was, what was happening. They were to cross in a place called Gigal. That's where they were going to cross and go on to the promised land. So every person that is here faces his or her own Jordan from time to time. We deal with obstacles. We deal with challenges that hinder us from obtaining our spiritual victory. And today I want to address the issue of getting past your Jordan. There must be a way that you and I can go past our Jordan. There are three points that I'm going to bring, and in those points I have many other points. Number one, there are three considerations. The first consideration is there is a message. There is a message to consider. And the message, there are three things that are there because the message involves a challenge. And there are three things in that challenge that are very critical to us. When it came time for the people to move forward to cross Jordan, God had a message for them. They needed to hear. And that's why Joshua is saying, come closer. Come closer. And they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark, is a promise. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. There is something. There is something that is happening. And God is saying, when you see it, when your eyes can see it, you need to go and pursue it. Verse number four. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this. In other words, God is saying, don't come so close. You even don't know where you're going. Let the ark go before you. Because you have never walked this before. I know there are people who keep sana. We miss the point. You don't know. Even me, I don't know. I still need God to come and help me. Even after reading the Bible, you can read it many times, cover to cover. But you don't know. You still need the Spirit of God to give a quickening. A quickening in your spirit so that you can move into the next level of what he has. So there is a message for you to consider. Because in the challenge, there are three important things that you need to do. Number one, you need to watch God. Watch God. Notice that the Ark of the Covenant is mentioned seven times in chapter 3. The Ark, you may remember, was that special piece of the tabernacle furniture. But uh, let me tell you this. That Ark carried in it. Manna, meaning provision, carried the, the, the rod uh, of Moses, meaning what? Meaning God was going to protect. So there was protection and there was provision. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's why it's important. When you move into a house, declare that you are bringing the ark. Sukuma ark ukondani. Let the ark protect, let the ark provide. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That was the ark was for. So he stood now before you. You don't know this way. Before you, there is God's protection. There is God's provision. There is God's victory. You can say anything. The ark of the Lord carried for them the power of God. So watch. Watch God. Don't allow. Don't miss him. Watch him. Watch God. There is a lesson here we can learn in this passage for you and me. And we will do well if we learn it. 
when we face times of crisis and we will or when we need direction in life and we will it is good to be sensitive to the movement of the Lord around us what is God saying what is the sign and you see the Bible says and this shall be the sign a virgin shall be with a child and this is the sign when you see the water troubled what is the sign what is God saying watch him watch him a lot of us have missed him because every time we watch him and we hear him we think it is for somebody else and we pass it to somebody else but watch him it is good for us when we face those problems to watch it is a fact that God loves us but even when God loves us if you will watch him he will teach you how to live day by day I was, I was listening to a song that um, was sung many times, um, many years ago. How did you leave your house this morning? Did you forget to pray? It's a song. Is it, was, was it Charlie Pride? For those that... Uh, Charlie Pride, you know. You know, you know, Charlie Pride. Oh. Na Jim Reeves? Oh, I'm muskizi. Ah, okay. So the first thing that we need is to watch God. Watch him in the morning. Look at the direction he's taking. Pray that God will set you free. This morning as we woke up, I prayed. And I prayed that God will minister to us even healing on our physical and spiritual body. Little did I know that my wife would later tell me she's not feeling comfortable. But a while ago she told me, I'm coming down to that service. Because we prayed in the morning. We declared healing. I, didn't, I don't know why we prayed for that. You see, it is always good to declare things. Usi goje baka mtu amegoje, katangaza, musimamu. Uhai, uzima, baraka. Watch what God is saying. And when you hear it, even when you don't have faith, speak it out. Speak it out. Wengine wenu, speak London. You don't know where it is, but just speak it. You know, sometimes I feel like I want to preach. You know, sometimes, not always, but sometimes you feel like you're preaching. Wewe, amuka. You know, wewe, amuka. You know. Amuka. The second thing about what the challenge of the message was, we have to follow God. When they saw the Ark of the Covenant, they were to leave their position and move. And you know, it is not easy. Some, some of our places are so comfortable. This week we were talking about ministers that have missed the timing of God. And when they try to do it, they fail. Not that we are so successful, not that we are better than them, but the timing is critical. Timing is critical. Timing is critical. Some of you, God has given you an opportunity to start business. But you don't start it when the timing is. Because you are, you know, and there is a way. Let me tell you a secret that I have discovered. If God wants to do something for you, and he wants you to relocate, every time you try to relocate, Boswako anakuongeza mshara. Kapisa? From nowhere, anasema somewhere. So somewhere he has to get to a place and say, Me not kwanza kazi yangu. Now watch you <laughs> that happens. Unatakuhama pesa nyingi. Unatakuhama promotion. Unataka kusoma kabla uja enroll, unasema kwa kwanza ni kule hizi pesa kidogo kwa hey, tagidi with all much, I watch ni kule hizi pesa. You know, and so on. But let's follow God. Leave your place and go after it. Not only were they to watch God, they were also to move when God moves. When God moves, let's move. Number three, in the challenge of the message, they were demanded to honor God. So there is a message. God wants to deliver us. God wants us to cross over. There is a Jordan for you. What is he telling you? He's telling you, watch me. Two, he's telling you, follow me. Three, he's telling you, honor me. Those that honor God. God will honor them too. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the message involved a challenge. The message also involved a command. The people were commanded, sanctify 
yourself. If you and I expect to get past the Jordan that is rising in our lives, we are going to have to learn that one of the first things that we need to do is to sanctify ourselves. The message involved a commitment. We are talking about that challenge of that. Because there is a challenge of the word of God. But it will involve my commitment to it. This message to the Israelites reminded them that getting across the Jordan did not rest on their shoulders, but on the Lord's. He is only asking us, follow me, follow me, follow me. And that's all, pursue him. That's what the children of Israel were supposed to do. But what do they do? And what do you and I do? We worry. We panic. We are anxious. And yet the Bible tells us in the Matthew 6, we shouldn't worry. Reminds again, why should we worry over material things that the Lord has promised to come and supply? Why do we worry about those so many things in the book of Philippians, he's telling us we need only to trust. Our duty is to trust him. The bottom line is, that line is this. Jesus is all-powerful, he's all-knowing, and he's all-sufficient and present. He knows what you are going through. He knows everything there is to know about it. He knows even more than about what you, you think you do. He knows. Actually, he knows my tomorrow which I don't know. I have no problem. I have no idea about tomorrow. Matthew 8, 26, the just shall live by faith. We need faith. Romans, uh, 1, 7, Romans 14, 23. Whatsoever is of faith, whatsoever is not of faith, is sin. Matthew 8, 26. Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? So there is a demand of commitment. God has said it. I believe it, and I want to pursue it. In the name of the Lord. And that's a message. So let's take it to heart. There is a message. Consider the message. What is God saying? Secondly, let's consider the miracle. Consider the miracle. There was a problem. As mentioned in the introduction, the children of Israel were facing a big problem. At that time, the river is so wide at that time. Almost a mile wide. At that time... There are two million people to cross over. I was saying, anytime we have a visitor and this, the second service, people are walking out, they normally say something like, hey, see you in Girimingi sana. Become a 5,000, eh? And then I tell them, hata wajafika ngiri moja. Sama apana, unadanganya bishop. Sama apana, see, mimi ni pastor. See evangelist. Mi na esabigi. Two million. Can you think about two million? Two million. Two million. See, 400. Najwa tukua shule, we were 400. Na watu wa nyuma, from four, hawakuwa wakiimba wimbo wa taifa vizuri. Walikuwa wakisema, kira siku tunyue chai na sukari. Huko. Na hawazi sikika. Na ni wimbo wa taifa. Eh hey, mungu, kira siku tunyue chai na suka. Wako huko. Si tunasikia tu. Lakini si ni form 2 na form 1. Tunaimba vizuri. Lakini form 3 na form 4 huko. Wanaongeza chai. Na wanaongeza sukari. 2 million. Yani watu wakwanza wakiwa mbele. Kilometer kadhaa nyuma. Kuna watu. Wanaenda tu. Wanaenda tu. Wanaenda tu. No wonder they are told, hebu mukae mbali kidogo, ili mukija, buwana ameenda mbele zenu. There was a problem, and the problem was, this were too many people. And you know what? Have you ever looked at your problem, or your Jordan, and thought about how big it was? You look at it, and it is huge. Maybe you looked at it and concluded, there is no way around, there is no way through it, there is no way past it. There is no way I can go through this problem. But as I pause, even the children of Israel got to that level. How did they get to that level? The ten spies in the book of Numbers. They went and they brought a report. You know, 
why, why so interesting is that the report they brought is what God had told them. But when God told them, he also told them, I'm the one taking you there to possess it. So it is yours. So at that time they had no problem. But they got to a place. Let's first do help to spike it over. When they went, they came back. Ten of them said it is impossible. Only two who said, let's go quickly. But they couldn't because the others were crying. And because of that, they went around the wilderness. They said there was no way. God, look at our problem. We cannot go through it. But all what he's saying is, watch me, follow me, honor me, and I give you the land. It is all yours. Easy. Why do I say it is easy? Because God had a plan. Amen. Did you know that God has a plan for you, Jordan, for you to overcome it? All what you need is relax in his presence, look at him, watch him, follow him, honor him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There was a plan. The plan was this, God said, when the feet of the priest enter Jordan, I'm going to part the waters and lead you through the dry ground. That was the plan. God has a plan for me. I might not know it. He wants me to go through it. You know, uh, in the first service, we had the map of uh, uh, Israel. And for those that have gone to Israel, you discover that uh, we never went to that Karut. But the children of Israel went first to deal with Edom. They, felt, they dealt with Moabites. They felt with Ammonites. That, they went that way. They started conquering those countries. And then to conquer them, you are on the other side of the Dead Sea. Which we saw. Huge! And then they have to enter now to go to Jericho. They have to enter in a place called Gigal so that they can go to Jericho. And you can go around it. You cannot go over it because there are no boats. But you can go around it. But God does not want them to go around it because of if they did, they will never know what God can, can do. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know if God can solve it. That's why the singer says, through it all. There they are. There is water here. But God has promised we watch him. We follow him. We honor him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There is a plan. What lesson is there for you and for me? That God wants us to fix everything in our lives upon him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that he can take us on the other side. There was a plan. The third thing that I know there was also in the miracle that God was going to do them as I consider it, there was a performance. When the priest stepped, that was a performance. They had to do something. You know, you, you, we want miracles. God, oh, come, men, do this and that and the other. But you see, the Bible says, God will bless the labors of my hands so I cannot see it. Even the birds that come to wake me in the morning. I'm like the birds we saw in uh, kwa, kwa, kwa Ndugu Charles. Charles, I'm a, I'm a panda miti mingi. Kuna ndege wengi uko. Hey. Wana thonja uko. Thonjo nye nyingi. But even those birds, when we were having our service, they had left their nests. Where had they gone? They had, they had to watch God and follow him and honor him. God is going to supply my needs according to his riches and glory. Fine. But I have to get out of the nest. That's the point. Our God was able then. He is able now. He will continue being able. Notice the question that, the, that plagued the Jews in the book of Psalm 78. Yes, they spoke against God and said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? And the answer is, Behold, he smote the rock that the water gushed out and the stream overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide fresh for his people? And God can do it. He did it. He did it. 
He can still do it for us today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So how many times has the Lord opened your Jordan in your life? And when you see another one, it's like it has never happened. He is all we need. He is still the same miracle working God. And he has always been. Learn to expect miracles when you are dealing with God. That takes me back to expect a miracle every day. Expect a miracle when you pray. If you believe in God, he will find a way to perform a miracle for you each day. That's it. Miracle siya watu fulani. Miracle ni yako na yangu. Why am I saying this? And I want to hear this because this is a very good illustration. David picks five smooth stones, right? David carrying a sling. But David knew God has to fight the battle for him. He tells Goliath, you come to me with a javelin and so on. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Now that is a secret. The guy was 10 feet or 9 feet or whatever feet you think. Standing this way. And you know some of our Jordans are standing. They are taller than us, bigger than us, stronger than us. Could be financial, big mountain and so on. But listen, when David knocked Goliath down, he was no longer 10 feet tall. He was only 10 feet long. Who was tall this time? David was. There are some of you that God wants to do something for you. Yes, the Goliath is there. Knock him down. He will no longer be tall. He will just be long and useless. You know, that's why I'm saying sometimes you feel like preaching. You know, preaching. You, know, you tell people... Uh, what God can do. God can do it. He went in the valley. Goliath was tall. But finally, he was just long. May your problems be long. May they not be tall in the name of the Lord. May God give you victory to knock the tallness into longness. Because it will be useless long there. Finally, so we have said there is a message to consider. I pray that you consider it with all the challenge that there is. There is a miracle to consider. And in the miracle, you remember I said there is a performance for you. Finally, there is a memorial to consider. Memorial to consider. When all the people had passed over Jordan, Joshua commanded one man from each of the 12 tribes to get a rock from the midst of Jordan and build a memorial on the Canaan side. So they went to build a memorial. So number one, the question is, the purpose of the memorial. You see, when, when, um, when we do memorial, or even a memorial service, it's supposed to be memory. The memories the highs and the lows. For us that went to uh, Kibera's uh, dad's funeral, they, they, when they were reading the tribute, they read something like this. In, in one of the many things they said, but our daddy was also very stubborn. Now that's memorial. You know, sometimes we can even make the devil go to heaven and we know he won't by the story we tell. Of course, our brother had known the Lord, but towards his end, atakunywa dawa, alikuwa na shida sana. And Kebera would tell us, we would pray for him. Anywe dawa, anakata. Na sasa, si atazi tuko na wazazi wa nakataaga, si kunywe. Wegine mbaka, dawa zirieda wapi, easy. Unakuta dawa zire zoto, mudununua ziko hapo, na hanywe. So memory is where you share those things about that person. You remind yourself that is a memory should remind you things. Now, a memorial thing that you put, a memorial that you put, should be for something. And the word to put the memorial so that it will remind 
the successive generations of the power and faithfulness of God on behalf of his people. That memorial would be an important landmark to those who would come after. So that when you are passing by, you can ask, why this? Why that? And then you are told, our forefathers passed here. We need to erect some memorials in our lives as well. But we must be cautious so that we don't make memorials and become, they become little gods that we, we are there. It, Wimbo Niule, 1922, 1930, when Kare Francis, I don't know Kare Francis, was he a preacher? Came around and so on and so forth. So we go back to those years. But we are saying, no, 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 no. We'll make memorial, but we'll go on. We'll make memorial, but we'll go on. Memorials will help us not to forget what God has run, done in our yesterday. Our yesterday. Because it is those yesterday experiences that will push us to the vi victories of tomorrow and the life after. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are ways of them, those memorials, who passing through the valley of Baca remembers them. It was well, the rain also fused the, the pool. There is a memory of the Baca valley, dry as it was, God's provision. And it is important for us. You know, I, I, love, I love people who come and remind me who I am. Gatururu, gatururu, meriten. Who people who remind me that? They make me feel, God, you are awesome. Because two, my, two pineapples was 10 cents. That was the seller. Kabili, I would speak here, na here, gineote, so that people can come and buy. People who, 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 who look at me and say, Wewe siyo yule alikuwa kipiga matatu zama idasu area idasu area siyo wewe when they say so what comes in my mind is God you are awesome but thank you that I'm not how about the people who say are you not the one who used to, who used to say I know some of you think somebody that was two time being capsules but you don't mention them yes and somebody you tell you sold them now when somebody reminds you that you say god you delivered me Amen. now that is what god needs to always remind you when do you ulishi kanyumba hata sitting room hata ukutumia dining table dio mimi yeah when do you ulishi pale zima manchini dio mimi it reminds you you know, sometimes you can forget. And life is very interesting. Unapata mbaka unasahau. Uwe ukikumbuka. So, normally I remind myself. Every time I would go to the U.S. those years, everybody in church would know. Na, hili ni changiwe. And Nikiona our sheikh narudia tena. By the way, Dr. Niko na safari kwenda US. Ninaona anani igino. So it's always good to remember. When God reminds me, and he reminds me by me seeing somebody doing it so that I can help them. I say, uyu, anamepitia pale nilipitia. Kama tayi na wewe wende utembe. May the Lord humble us. So the picture is easy, but there are two things that I want to finish with. One is a picture of faithfulness when we build the altar on the banks. It is noticeable. People can see it. But there is another one that is built inside the waters. Now that simply means it is in my heart. Nobody can see it. But I have a memorial in my heart of what God has done. I will not only do for others, I will also do one for myself where nobody will know. But deep within me, I'm saying, Lord, thank you for this thing that you have done for me. 
Some of you are facing troubled waters today. I want you to know that you can cross over. You can go through it. But we can only do it, remember what we said, by watching God, by following God, and by honoring God. We are saying, no, God, we must do something. We will arise and do something. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I want to thank you that every Jordan here, we are going to go over it in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how wide it is. It doesn't matter how deep it is. Because we are going to watch your direction. When you say we will, we will. When we say we can, we can. And we are going to pursue it that way in the name of Jesus. When every head is bowed, I know there could be a few Jordans you are trying to cross. Whether financial or health, whatever Jordan you are trying to cross, would you want to, to tell the Lord, Lord, this is my Jordan, and I want you to help me overcome it. I want to watch. Give me the grace to watch. I want to follow. Give me the grace and the stamina and strength to follow. Oh, give me the grace to honor you as you do that. If that is the kind of cry from your heart, would you stand on your feet? You're saying, Lord, I have a Jordan. And you know your Jordan. And your Jordan is not mine. Your Jordan is uniquely your Jordan. And it's only God who can help you come through and strong over your Jordan. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I too am standing because, Lord God, I know that I crossed another Jordan not long ago. But there is another Jordan. And that's what these men and women, brothers and sisters standing, they are saying, Lord, there is a Jordan before them. And Father, they want to see the direction. I pray that you speak in their spirit. They are in the men who hear the voice of the Lord saying this is the way to walk in it. May you open avenues for them. Father, may you cause them to inherit that which is theirs in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that there will be nothing, not the rivers or Jordans that will hinder us getting into our promised land. I speak healing. I speak provision. I speak the ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant to go before your people, declaring victory, declaring victory, declaring victory. Lord God, I want to thank you and to give you praise. We'll come back here to give, you tes to give testimonies of what you have done. For this is our prayer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. We may get seated. I don't know where you are, even those that are viewing us. And you know what? There could be a Jordan for you there. A Jordan that has hindered you. An obstacle. Would it be seen? An obstacle. Would it be relationship? an obstacle? Would it be that you have never even known the Lord, so you cannot watch him, you cannot follow him, you cannot honor him, but you want to do so now. And I want to give you an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, because if you do, then you will cross over your Jordan. If you pray this prayer after me from wherever you are, my faith is that God will reach you wherever you are in the name of the Lord. Pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know there is an obstacle in my life, an obstacle of sin, and I want to repent my sins. I want to ask that, Lord, you come into my heart and save me. Write my name in the book of life, and that from today, I'm a child of God. I will watch and I will follow and I will honor you in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, there is a number on the screen you can call and somebody will be ready to pray with you. May God bless you and this week may you walk over your Jordan in Jesus' name. <laughs>